Many people believe that there is nothing that can be known about the return of Jesus Christ because they said he would come like a thief. But Paul makes it clear in 1 Thessalonians 5 that Jesus' statement does not apply to believers. Check out this verse. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. He then proceeds to explain why. For you all sons of light and sons of day. God doesn't wish that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Therefore, God always warns before he executes his wrath. And for thousands of years, God has chosen climatic and catastrophic weather to get our attention. Why? Because God controls the weather. Let's explore that. Hi, I'm Nathan Jones, an evangelist here with Lamb and Line Ministries. I'm here with my wife, Heather Jones, who also serves at the ministry. Uh, folks, you've noticed that there is a lot of terrible natural disasters happening all over the world. As a matter of fact, we pulled up this article, The World's Most Extreme Weather Events of 2021, written by Julia O'Driscoll from The Week, come out on August 31st, and she lists 16 of the most tremendous natural disasters that have been fallen us in this world. Let's go quickly through it, Heather, and then we'll get into the reason why has God used natural disasters to get our attention. Uh, what's the first one? Well, the first one was a uh, storm Philomena that happened in Madrid. And so they had record breaking snow and I mean, left people stranded and they don't usually, they don't see events like this. And it caused $1.6 billion of damage. Yeah, they say it was the worst snowstorm in 50 years. The second one is Storm Christoph in the UK. They said it was one of the wettest three day periods on record and it affected North Wales and Northwest England. And the people report that it was a tremendous ap atmosphere of anxiety and um, disbelief. And then Fiji was hit by Cyclone Anna and and that just happened after they already had a cyclone and that made 10,000 people take refuge and 318 evacuation centers across the country had to be open to help the people that were hurt during the storm. For where it affects us here in Texas, you remember back in February, oh, we, we had do. this cold snap, this polar vortex came down, temperatures dropped to negative 13 degrees Celsius, which is unheard of in this area. Many uh, people without power, we had pipes, we didn't have water for a few days. So that was a major one for here in Texas. It was, yes. And then there was a dust storm in China. And so we don't really experience that here. So we might not think about it, but I mean, it totally blacked out the skies and caused also um, hazardous breathing conditions for the people there in, in that area. Yeah, the people in Beijing said the sky turned orange. Uh, number six is flooding in New South Wales, both Sydney and New South Wales. Residents felt the effects of extreme flooding. Heavy downpouring led to rivers and dams overflowing and thousands evacuating from their homes. And then Indonesia, unfortunately, was hit by a cyclone, Saruja. And so not only were they hit by the cyclone, but then the aftermath was flooding and, and landslides. And they hadn't seen this, anything like this in decades. And 22,000 people were displaced and had to leave their homes because of this disaster. Number eight is record temperatures in Moscow. A record-breaking heat wave affected Russia. And then there was a heat dome over again in the US, over in Canada and in the Pacific area of our country, they had record heat wave of like 115 degrees, which that's not weird for here in Texas, but for there it was devastating and they're not prepared for that sort of environment. Number 10 floods in New York state where my wife is from. Uh, the storms were so intense that it filled up the subway stations. And then we had, we've had fires um, in you know, in the whole Pacific area in California, Oregon and all that area. But the bootleg fire um, was the biggest fire that Oregon has had forever. And that destroyed 160 homes and also lots of um, ranches and, and different things out there. Germany, number 12, uh, flooding in West Germany. It says engulfed the streets and swallowed the homes. Yeah, I was watching footage of that. That was scary. I mean, totally washed out homes, rivers. Then there was floods in China as well. They said it was the most rain they had seen there in a thousand years. That is amazing. Wildfires in Greece is number 14. 12 people died. Greece, Turkey, and Italy. Wildfires spreading all over the Mediterranean due to a heat wave. 
And then, of course, some of the recent disasters, one of them was the terrible earthquake in Haiti. That was a 7.2 on the Richter scale. Fortunately, Ida just kind of blew through, but it still left a tremendous amount of damage, millions of people without power. Now, it's interesting what the, the scientists, of course, are saying about this. Scientists long warned that climate change would contribute to an increase in both the frequency and severity of freak weather. Interesting, frequency and severity. These are two words that we'll see here in just a minute. Matter of fact, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel warned that we have to get faster in the fight against climate change. Global leaders also have to come to the same conclusion after the UN delivered a code red for humanity. So the world is seeing that these natural disasters are increasing in frequency and intensity. But isn't it interesting that they're claiming that it's mankind causing this? There are, at least I found 47 different verses that say that God is con in control of the weather. Let's, for instance, look at Matthew 8, 26 through 27. What kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey? And remember when Jesus stood up and calmed the storm? He controlled the weather. Psalm 148, 8 says, Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfill his word. Acts 14, 17 says, He did not leave himself without witness, and that he did good and gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons. And then let's give one more Revelation 7, 1. I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or in any tree. So again and again and again, at least 47 references I could find, the Bible says that it's God who's in control of the weather. Now, it's interesting that, let's go back to that frequency intensity. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 8, that these signs of the end times that lead up, that point to his soon return would come like, uh, birth pains. I, I didn't go through birth. You went right. through three of them. What was that like? Yeah. So, I mean, it starts slow and the pain's not bad. And then as time goes on, it's more intense and um, they come more frequently. And then, then you get to the point where it's time for the baby to come. So, yeah, it's, the signs are showing that all this happening with weather and so many things going on. We're just, you know, the sign of the time we're concentrating is weather today. But it shows that God wants us to wake up and to come to him. And he's warning us that he is upset with our sin and he's upset with, with everything that's going on here on the earth. And he's saying, come back to me. Absolutely. The ultimate judgment coming is called the tribulation. The Lord will rescue or rapture his church out of here before his wrath comes upon the world. But leading up to it, He's going to increase the signs of natural disasters like we're seeing other signs, social, political, war, economic. Those will all increase in frequency and intensity leading up to the rapture of the church and then the world plunging into God's wrath during the tribulation. So ask yourself, are you alert? Do you see the signs of the times? If not, then you need the Holy Spirit and you. you need to be saved as a Christian. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Call upon him to be the Lord and Savior of life and you will be saved and then you will understand better the signs of the times.